record of 43 wins, 6 losses, 1 draw and 37 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, the former WBC World Welterweight Champion, Jorge Baca! And in the blue corner, born in Clarendon, Jamaica, and currently fighting out of Washington, D.C., weighing in at 146 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 26 wins, one loss, and 20 knockouts, here is the IBF World Welterweight Champion, Simon Brown! For the final instructions. Rudy Battle from Woodbury, New Jersey, the non-scoring referee. As we look at the tail of the tape, 23-year-old Simon Brown, the champion. Same height as his challenger, 27-year-old Jorge Vaca. We mentioned Vaca had difficulty making the weight, was a half pound over at the weigh-in, subsequently got down to the required 147. The judges are Rick Bays from Miami, Leroy Brown from Jamaica, Juan Jose Ramirez from Tijuana, Mexico. Brown in goal and the challenger Vaca in blue trunks and we are underway. Remember, there is no canopy over the ring here at the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica. Temperatures in the ring about 100 degrees. Scheduled for 15 rounds, one of the last IBF championship fights over this distance. They'll go to 12 on the 1st of September. Vaca came out and found the range with a couple of good stiff jabs, Tim. Well, boxing fans will remember that Simon Brown went down for the first time in his career in the fight in which he won the title in the second round against Tyrone Trice. Got up to stop Trice in round 14. Knocking the head back of Jorge Vaca. was wide open. The Baca just stood there and punched right back. Tim Baca takes a great punch on the chin. But I doubt if he takes that good a punch to the body. And, and Brown is a wicked body puncher. Good combination scored by the champion. Wearing the colors of the Jamaican flag. Gold and green and black. The combination scored by Vaca. There's that left hook to the body blocked by Vaca. But it zips in there. Another right scored by the champion. Both fighters are landing heavily in the early going. Tim, they sure didn't have to warm up in this heat. Wide punches by Vaca. That's the big advantage of Brown has. He punches faster, and he throws his punches straighter. Under a minute to go on round one. Right followed by a left from Brown and a left to the body. Vaca got the elbow on a piece of that punch. Under 30 seconds we go, round one. Then both these guys want to end this thing early. That's for sure. Heavy punching. A down goes Baca from a right hand by Simon Brown. Right on the button, Tim. Bell is sounded despite our clock still going. And Baca will get through round one. He was up at the count of eight. And the round ended immediately afterwards. So in the Baca corner, immediately above us, they'll go to work on the challenger, Nacho Silva, his trainer and cut man.
Tim, there were some vicious punches landed by both fighters in that round. There's that big straight right hand right on the button. That's what we mentioned. Brown throws his punches so much faster and so much straighter than Vaca does. Another look at it, Jorge Vaca with a tremendous right hand from Brown sending him down to the canvas in the waning seconds of round one. In the Brown corner, they've got an umbrella over to him to protect them against the sun. Again, a reminder, there is no canopy over this ring at the National Stadium. Into round number two, the challenger down late in round one. Beautiful move by Brown. He landed to the back of the head with that right hand on the move. And every punch that Brown throws is a home run ball. Watching him in training go, we saw that he, he seemed to be tuning up on the home run balls. Well, the only thing when you do that, Tim, you let yourself, oh, he's down now. Right on the chin, and Baca may not make it up from this one. Baca trying to shake the cobwebs, and he jumps up with blood from the nose, telling Rudy Battle that he's all right. Battle checks him out. He'll carry on. Brown rushing in, misses with two punches. Baca punching back on wobbly legs and the left sends him down. Tim, wide punches are never going to beat straight punches. Never. Baca throws his punches too wide, and he's getting nailed time after time. Second knockdown early in the second round. Baca still on unsteady legs. Punching, but with no power at all, and Brown firing away another right hand. Baca somehow stays up, takes another right hand, and down he goes. Second knockdown. Third knockdown, scored by Brown. Rudy Battle checking him out. Now, the three knockdown rule that applies in some other jurisdictions under other associations does not take place in the IBF rule. It's up to the discretion of the referee. And Barker is not trying to avoid punishment at all. He's winging, he's getting nailed. Standing right there for Brown to get another clean shot at him. Brown now stepping back for punching range. Baca stays right there. Trying to punch back. And he's coming back. after Brown. Under a minute to go in round number two. Baca firing back, trying to survive. What a game round. guy, Tim. Is he ever? There's nothing on his punches. Down he goes again for the third time in this round. Under the 30-second mark, Rudy Battle looking at him very closely now. And Baca looks a little less certain about going forward, but is telling the referee he will. Still winging punches, Tim, that's all he knows how to do. And the bell sounds, and he takes a shot after the bell, makes it back to his corner. Just breathe, breathe now, breathe through it. I'm gonna breathe through it. In the Baca corner, they shower him with water, and Nacho Silva, stemming the flow of blood from the nose, and the doctor has come in to check out Jorge Baca. Yeah, okay, let me see. Here's a look at the first knockdown in this round. A solid right hand by Brown. And this is the third knockdown of the round, fourth of the fight. The last one in this round. Another long right hand knocked him into the ropes and then he fell down coming off. And according to our uh, timers, uh, the round Actually, only went two minutes and 50 seconds by our CBS timer. So Baca, ready to go and come out for round number three. And he doesn't know anything to do, Tim, except walk forward and fight. That's all Baca knows, and he's coming after Brown again. Well, the former Mexican welterweight champion certainly has shown his valor early on. 
knocked down late in round one, three more in round two, and he is still oh. here and takes a solid left hook. The ground is so quick, Tim. Makes beautiful moves. Simon Brown wanted to win well, look good here in front of his native Jamaicans. And he's off to a tremendous start. Rudy Battle advising him to keep the blows up. A wild swinging left hook from Baca grazed the chin of the champion. Another right hand landed by Brown. Tim, you talk about throwing punches with bad intentions. Everything Brown throws is with bad intentions. No setup punches at all. a right to the body and then a right to the head as he turns and lands another left hook. Brown is now fighting south for Tim. I don't know why he switched. Oh, there he's back again. Couldn't improve on what, what he was doing earlier. Gabbing well, throws the right behind it, but finds Baca still standing. Baca bangs to the body. A little more sting in his punches. Brown has such good defense inside, though, Tim. Very good defensive fighter. Now there's a cut at the corner of the right eye of the challenger, Baca. We're in round three, scheduled for 15 in the sweltering heat of the Nashville Stadium in Jamaica. Brown pummeling Baca. Baca on the ropes, down he goes with the right hand, and Rudy Battle says, that's it. It is all over in round number three. Tim, what a game. Media people and fans have jumped into the ring as Simon Brown celebrates victory in Jamaica. Let's go back and take a look at that knockdown here in the third round, which finished the fight. Baca pinned against the ropes. And there's those sharp body shots, Tim. They're like hot pitchforks going into your side when he hits you with those punches. Those are the ones that really do it. Those body shots set up the head punches, and then down he goes, and it's, it's finished. And Tim, he is still out and still on the canvas. Rudy Battle. Did not hesitate at all. As soon as that right hand landed, he jumped in and waved the fight over. Did not allow any thought of Baca getting up from this one. And he is still being attended to on the canvas. June 10th, 1948. 21,500 fight fans crowd. Well, those of you Hungarians looking in at home uh, were able to follow that entirely, and I think the rest of you figured out the challenger Jorge Mazenet and the champion Simon Brown, a referee Rudy Battle with the final instructions. Mazenet came in at 147, Simon Brown at 146, and the champion 27 and 1 with 20 knockouts. As we see the tail of the tape, he is 24 years of age. They are the same height, although Mazenet does appear to be slightly taller than Simon Brown. And uh, the weight differential, just the one pound. The champion coming in one under the 147 limit. IBF scoring by three judges at ringside on the 10-point must system. Newt Jensen from Denmark. Leroy Brown from Jamaica. Rick Bays from Miami, Florida. will do the scoring. A huge ring here, 24 feet inside the ropes. And uh, whether that's going to have an effect on one guy or the other, I don't know. But for one thing, they're going to cover a lot more territory than they're used to, Gil. Tim, it's the biggest ring I've ever seen. I've been around for a while. It'll be interesting to watch the first time they back up expecting to be touching the ropes with their back and, and still have another foot or two to go. And they lean back and fall down. Simon Brown in the green trunks, Jorge Maisonette from Puerto Rico, now living in New York, in the red trunks with white trim. Maisonette moved to New York about a year ago had most of his recent fights in Philadelphia and he pounds away here at the champion in the opening minute. Simon Brown known for his excellent defensive ability and he'll need it against the hard punching Mazinetto who has a good solid left jab that has knocked some guys down. Brown likewise has a very effective jab perhaps not as much power but a lot of accuracy. Breaking up, baby. Three bucks, 
Rangers, and that's throwing punches in combinations, but Brown so far has been able to uh, block most of them effectively, but Mazenet just got a good left in. Tim, you're gonna see both good combinations from both these guys. They're both well-schooled fighters. Both strong amateur Rangers. Another left, and a second one by Mazenet. Good left hook on the chin by Mazenet, and then back to the body. Mazenet, trained by Lenny De Jesus. Also his manager, and their plan was to come out, go at the champion early. He's had a lot of success early against inferior fighters. A good right hand by Brown. That got Mazenet's attention. And the question mark about Mazenet, can he take a punch? Tim, uh, that's two things you have to worry about with Mazenet, his chin and his stamina. Simon Brown, we know, can go the distance. Under a minute to go in round one. Mazenet has lost only twice, once by knockout. K.O. came in April of 87 to Danny Garcia down in Puerto Rico where he began his professional career. Good left hook to the body by Simon Brown got Mason Nett's attention. Under the 32nd mark we go. Brown with a left hook backing up Mason Nett. Brown is such a beautiful defensive fighter, Tim. Rolls with those punches, blocks them with his shoulders. Short right by the champion, Brown. Final second, Brown one, scheduled for 12. Live from Budapest, Hungary, first ever professional bout here. Gil Clancy live from Budapest. It is just past 7.30 in the evening here. We are live on CBS Sports Saturday. Simon Brown, the champion in the green trunk, defending his title against Jorge Masonet. Brown, born in Clarendon, Jamaica, now lives in Washington, D.C. Masonet from Puerto Rico, recently uh, moved to New York. He's been there about a year. Tim, what Brown is doing is putting a lot of pressure on Masonet without throwing too many punches. He's making Masonet work. You mentioned uh, Jorge Masonet had not been uh, sparring since he arrived over here. He sparred for 90 rounds preparing for this fight back in New York against tough opposition, according to his trainer, Lenny De Jesus. Well, Tim, I used to like my guys to spar, spar up until two days before a fight. I was a little mystified that he hadn't sparred in 10 days. All well, left by the champion, Brown. Masonet was in the ring with two 15-year-old national age weight champions here, amateurs, of course, in uh, Hungary on Thursday. And while he held back on him, he didn't exactly let up all together. What a thrill for those two youngsters. They did pretty well. 15-year-old Jolt Erdi and 16-year-old Bukti Gabriel. Jolt of a lifetime. Masonet's been very busy, throwing a lot of leather, but uh, you point out... Uh, Gil Brown keeps pressure up, not throwing as many punches. Brown keeps that left foot right in between Masonette's feet. Masonette landed a left-right combination. There's a right hand that got through. Brown relentlessly coming forward. Blocking a lot of punches. Yeah, Masonette slipped two punches beautifully. And again. Stiff jab by Brown. A lot of shoe leather being used up in this huge 24-foot ring. Another minute to go round two as Masonette gets the jab into the face. A right by Brown. Staggered Masonette. And he's hurt, Tim. He's hurt. And an uppercut scores. Masonette in trouble. Left jab by Brown gets through. Masonette still throwing punches, but he's lost some sting. And Brown is throwing a lot of punches now, Tim. Using a lot of energy. Left to the body by Brown. Masonette still firing punches back without the same zip. Short right by the champion, Brown. Masonette better get out of there, Tim. That's that inexperienced, Tim. Not that many pro fights. He, he gets and he can hold. He's an offensive fighter, period. Another right and down he goes. A right and a left by the champion, Brown. Five. Six, Final seconds of round seven, number two. Eight. Masonette back okay. on his feet. All right. Tim, according okay. to the clock, they stopped the clock all the time he's been down. I don't know why. 
A right by Brown. Then this round should be over. Yes, it should. Hazenet in trouble. The bell hasn't sounded. It We're over the sound. It's four or five seconds ago. Finally, it sound. They evidently stopped the clock when Hazenet went down. But he survived the round nonetheless. Plenty to Jesus working feverishly now on Jorge Mazinet. Started with a solid right hand and a left behind it from the champion Brown. Let's see where Brown, there's that big right hand by Simon Brown, right over Masonette's left hand. That's when he was really hurt, Tim, and in trouble. Another right and then that left behind it. A solid right and the left, sending him to the canvas. Tim, you can't get hit much harder than Mason Ed got hit by that Simon Brown left hook. We're going to see it again now. There it is. That is a classic left hook. Now, Mason Ed, we mentioned, has lost only twice. One of those was by knockout April 25th of 87. Danny Garcia in Puerto Rico. Never lost by decision, but he has stopped all 19 of his opponents in the fights he has won. We'll see how much Brown is taken out of him. Tim, last round, they stopped that clock. When Mason Ed went down, they should not have stopped the clock. Well, and the last report we had was that John Robinson of the IBF was going to be the timekeeper in this fight. So uh, that's a bit of an unusual mistake for an experienced man like that. Again, Tim, Mason Ed is not boxing. He's still being the offensive fighter, still throwing all the punches. That's what he knows how to do. You think you think he'd move around for use this big ring, try to get that head clear, get his legs back from under. But no, he's still bombing away trying to throw punches, which is the wrong thing to do with Simon Brown right now. We're in round three, scheduled for 12, live from Budapest, and a right hand sends Mazinet to the canvas again. A right hand lead from Simon Brown. Rudy Battle, the referee from Woodbury, New Jersey, with another count for Mazinet. Then he's got to move. He has to move. Faint move, stick, grab, walk, do everything but fight right now. And there's another right hand on the chin by Brown. Those legs don't look so great under Mazinette and Brown to the attack. Mazinette just wants to fire back. Leading now from the mouth. Brown pouring it on. Here in the third. So all Mazinette knows how to do is wing punches, and he's getting nailed. Brown with a left that sends him down. Mazinette down for the second time in round number three. Rudy Battle taking a close look at him. I don't know that he'll let him go forward. Mazinette says he's all right, but Mazinette does not appear to have any legs at all, Gil. No, Tim, he's got over a minute to go in this round, and then Simon Brown's corner is saying, get him out of there. And he sure is doing a workmanlike job on taking the fighter out. And Rudy Battle's right there keeping an eye on him. Simon Brown in his third title defense has the fight stopped. In the third round, Jorge Mazinette unable to go any farther. Two knockdowns in the third round by Simon Brown. And now for the third time, he changed his IBF. Well, the weight championship. He had to go the distance against the Swiss Italian Moro Martello in his last outing. But here against the slugger from New York, Puerto Rican Jorge Mazinette, Brown found the opening. Sent his man down late in round two and finished him off here in the third. Two knockdowns and then Rudy Battle stopping it with Masonette still on his feet, but a badly beaten fighter. Well, Thomas Hearns. Michael second to none from Los Angeles, California. Here is the number one ranked challenger, Al Bumblebee. His opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, he weighed in at 147 pounds from Washington, D.C. With a professional record of 28 wins, one defeat, 21 knockouts, here is the IBF welterweight champion of the world, Simon Brown.
Gentlemen, you received your instructions prior to entering the ring. Therefore, I expect you to obey all my commands. And I expect a good, clean fight. I expect you to exhibit good sportsmanship. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves, go back to your corner. And we are ready to go. Scheduled for 12 rounds. And Sean O'Grady, Al Long, a very awkward, frustrating style. He will be trying to take away the power of Simon Brown. And Simon Brown is warned by Teddy Atlas, his trainer, that you're not going to be able to get long with one shot. You're going to have to show some combinations because he's not going to be in one spot for too long. Teddy Atlas says you're going to have to cut the ring off. You're going to have to use those combinations like you say. One shot is not going to take this guy out. Also, use the foot feints in the combination. Although, keep in mind, Al Long has not fought since a year ago when he fought to a 12-round draw to Russell Mitchell April 22nd. His fight before that, a 12-round decision over Alex Ramos in February. He has fought to a draw in three times in his last seven fights. He is in there to go the distance, and Bumblebee looking into the eyes of Simon Brown, who is looking to show his patience very early. Overhand right by Brown, who has knocked out 21 of his 28 victims, and it may have rattled long early. Tony Orlando already give uh, a warning to Al Bumblebee Long for hitting low. Long got caught with that right hand because he's got his left hand down around his waist. He's on his bicycle, he's moving around. This ring, we talked about the 18 foot, we didn't talk about the padding beneath this canvas. It is very thick, it is a slow ring, meaning for somebody like Bumblebee, as it goes longer, liable to wear his legs out. If Long comes up with a surprise tonight, it would be a major upset. And Long told me today, he said, uh, we've seen Simon Brown hit other people. He's got a lot of power, but we've never seen Simon Brown get hit. Not like I'm going to hit him. But in this first round, Al Bumblebee Long has been hit. Brown looking to flush out Long. Go to a body attack if he can. We'll try to throw some combination. The ring is in his favor, just 18 feet. And he has to feel that he is really in no danger of being knocked out by, by Al Long. So uh, Simon Brown looking to try a few things, but Long trying to surprise him. He has been a little more aggressive than he anticipated. Just saw Long learn something. He's instead of going away from that right hand, he's going into it underneath it to try to take the power away from Brown. If you pull away from a lot of punches, power, you get right into that danger zone that we've talked about so much on Thursday Night Fight. That 90% of the power is right on the end. Long is looking to make Brown miss and then counter. That's a slip. That's a slip. Brown just didn't have his feet under him. And Long hit him with the shoulder. Down with Brown. But what you need to do is try to get your opponent down on the ground. Make him like it. Make him know what it feels like to be on that uh, canvas. Long says he's not going to stand in front of Brown like some of his opponents have. He won't be there for one punch. Brown will leave five or six. Aw, big boys don't cry over little kids. That's how far he went to get ready for Simon Brown. Long has never been down. Between rounds, Teddy Atlas telling Simon Brown, cut off the ring, cut the ring down. Now, the way he does that, he, he takes a side step over. Let's see if he listens. Brown is lunging with his punches. However, that's his style. He lunges in and throws a couple of...